Hello! I would like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where today we are wrapping up our three-part series on the role of the optician in the successful independent optical shop. The Role of the Optician Part 1. There are three parts to this. They are all quite short. Please watch it all the way through. Part 1 we're calling You Still Gotta. There are some things that you must do when you are working in a business setting to help that business be successful. Even if you have experience, you worked on becoming an optician all on your own, whether you have a license, whether you have a certificate, whether you have a two-year degree, well, you still gotta. And this is all within reason. Don't be a doormat, and we talked about that before. But you know what? You still gotta answer the phone. You still gotta do the filing thing. You probably have to reconcile and pay the bills. You gotta vacuum, make appointments, sweep, mop, paint, clean windows, change light bulbs. If something's broken, you try to fix it. You tend to the bathroom. I do believe that in a successful independent OD's practice, they should have someone coming in from the outside and cleaning the office once a week. It's my personal belief. It's right. It is respectful to the employees. Maybe they don't do that where you work. Tending to the bathroom means if you're using it and you notice that it could use a little tidying up, well, you go ahead and do that. You might have to empty the trash, pick up trash. You're coming in in the morning and a whole bunch of stuff is blowing up against the door papers. Well, stop and pick that trash up. This is all part of being part of a successful business, helping it succeed and drive profit. The role of the optician in the successful running of a business, part two. This one we're calling money and a mirror. The well-run optical department, picture your usual independent optometry office. You've got the dispensary with the frame boards. You've got your reception area. You've got your hallway with the exam lanes, all separate departments. The optical department, where you sell frames and lenses, can drive, will drive, higher profits than all of the exam fees and contact lens sales combined. Please stop and think about that. Break out a calculator, play around with the figures a little bit. Average doc probably seen about 160 people a week for exams. 50 out of those 160 walk away with four boxes of contact lenses, punch a whole bunch of numbers into the calculator. Okay. Those two things added together don't meet the income generated from a good, well-run optical department. Right? And all of your trade magazines will confirm that and all of your consulting and partner groups. So you as an optician working or running the optical department, you have value. You have power within reason. It's not your store, but you're driving the bulk of the profit for that store. And you have a say within reason. You must know what things cost. And by that, I mean wholesale, retail. You must understand that you spend money, you buy things at wholesale, money goes out. You sell, you mark up and sell at a retail amount, you're up. Then you take away all of your operating costs, the stuff that we talked about in the last video, then you're left with your profit. You must understand that. You must know where the wiggle room is. That's why you need to know what things cost. 
It is your responsibility, your role as the optician, trying to make that optical department successful, drive those profits, to look for win-win situations at all times. You must be asking, looking for 30, 60, 90 billing, the best deal possible that you can get in any given situation. Second pair discounts with the lab. You need to be working at this, helping. And the mirror, the optical department where you work, you are an optician, you're in the optical department, you're in that area of the store with the frames and the lenses, that department is a direct reflection of you. Crazy important, make it look good. If you are a competent optician, you don't have to be a rock star, you have to just a good optician. You're working in the optical department, you have value. You are driving the most profit into that store. You have some limited power. You have a say. Make those changes happen so that optical department looks great. Or as a tie clip I have in my truck, long story, says, Give a damn. The role of the optician part three, calling this one tough love because, well, that's what it is. The role of the optician is to bring enough money into a store, an independent practice of some kind, to cover your expenses, your salary or hourly rate, your vacation, paid time off, all of the benefits that your employer provides plus something left over called profit. You are either an asset or a liability in this world. That's it, folks. This is reality. This is tough love. If your salary, vacation, and benefits cost your employer $100 a year, end of the year they look over the books and you brought in $110, hey, everything's great. They're up $10, they have profit. If your salary, vacation, and benefits cost your employer $100, they look back over the year on the books and you brought in 90, they're now $10 down. They're in the hole. They lost $10 by employing you. That, folks, is unsustainable. Reality, that's it. You have got to bring in enough to cover you plus have something left over for your employer. For your employer to provide a wage that you deserve, well, you must provide a reason for people to come in. Every optician has strengths and weaknesses. But wow, you better shine somewhere. You better be the best adjuster, fashion queen, make a great pair of glasses, have this super personality, whatever it might be. You better have a reason that people come into that store and spend money. You are a salesperson. You're not in healthcare. The doctor that you work for is in healthcare. You're a salesperson. Because no sales means no profit. No profit means no job. This model is unsustainable. You will lose your job. If you want an increase in wage, then earn it. Bring in customers and bring in money. You're going to say, but John, I mean healthcare. Okay, I don't care if you work for a hospital system and you run around in your white jacket and your pocket protector, okay? It's still unsustainable. If that hospital system has to pay $100 out to keep you and you only bring in 90, they are $10 loss. It's unsustainable. You must do this. Major wicked pet peeve of mine. <laughs> all right, and you see it on social media all the time. I get emails. Do not expect a raise for getting a license or an ABO certificate. If one or both of those is required to be an optician in the state you work in, well, that's just what you need to be an optician. You shouldn't get a little extra money because you get those. You should already have those. It just doesn't make any sense, right? If you want more money, then earn it. Bring in customers, 
bring in money. That is a nice little wrap up three parts of your role as an optician. I said it many, many times before. It really can be a great job, not physically demanding. Generally, where you work is pretty nice and opticianry is whatever you choose to make it. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching us on Facebook, please do give us a like. If you are watching us on YouTube, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there in the corner and make sure that every lens that you sell in your successful optical practice comes from Laramie K. I will see you again next week.